Let's say there's a king of the world who rules over every government to make sure the world is running smoothly. Then one day, the king of the world is visited by a race of aliens called the Seos. The king, unknowing if they are here to start a war or make peace, asks what brings them to Earth. To the king's surprise, the Seos are entrepreneurs, and they are simply interested in buying the planet. The king, being a greedy man, says that he would be interested in selling the Earth. The aliens are happy at the thought of doing business, and ask the king to make an offer. The king can tell that these aliens have previous experience buying planets, and doesn't want to make a bad deal with them. So the king goes to his royal scientists and asks, How much can we sell the Earth for? Today on Inquirity, we are the king's scientists, and our job is to answer our greedy leader's question. Now a great place to start is the internet. Funny enough, there's something perfect for this circumstance. Meet Gregory P. Laffin, a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at a little college known as Yale University. He developed this sexy equation known simply as Laughlin's equation to calculate how much a planet is worth in a dollar amount. All you do is plug in the planet's mass, temperature, age, brightness of its star, the type of planet it is, and some other fun parameters. And then about five headaches later, this equation poops out how much that planet is worth. All right, folks, place your bets. How much do you think the Earth is worth based on this equation? How about five quadrillion US dollars? That's a five with 15 zeros after it. A number so ridiculously large, Microsoft Word thought I was spelling quadrillion wrong. Which I was, but that's beside the point. Everything about our planet is perfect for sustaining life. Which of course skyrockets the listing price. And to put this into perspective of other planets, Mars is only worth about $16,000 and Venus is worth less than one cent. But wait a minute, I hear Objecting Man 237 typing in the comments. That equation must be wrong. How can Venus be worth less than one cent? It must be worth more than that since you can mine and sell minerals from Venus and get a lot more value from that. And yeah, Objecting Man 237 brings up a good point about planet buying. At first it seems easy to say, Alright kid, if you want to buy a planet then you need to pay for every pebble, stone, and other piece of junk all the way down to the center of the earth. But that method doesn't represent how property is bought and sold. When you own a piece of property, at least in the United States, you technically own everything under your property. Except in special cases like pipelines owned by the government. So you could in theory dig a 5 kilometer deep hole in your backyard as long as you're on your property and not breaking any other laws. When you buy a house, you don't pay for the hundreds of tons of dirt and raw material underneath your home. It's already included when you bought your house. So based on this fun property fact, humans do have ownership of all the materials in the earth from the surface to the center. But based on how we buy and sell property today, we would exclude the price of all the matter our planet is made up of when we sell it. We're really just selling the surface of our planet. So then do we have our final answer? Can we tell our king to go up to the extraterrestrial entrepreneurs and make an offer of a whopping five quads? No friend, we are just getting started. Warm up those calculators because that was the easy part. Laughlin's equation gives an estimated price based on the livability of a planet. Venus is almost worthless because as a property, Venus sucks, with the whole inescapable fields of lava. And Mars is worth only about $16,000 for being at least potentially habitable. But what Laughlin's equation doesn't tell us is the value of a planet based on two major resources that could drastically change its value. Ecosystems and people. The ecosystems on Earth could actually be a huge selling point for our planet. There are so many benefits to buying the Earth just for its ecosystems. Naturally fresh air, a diversity of food, scientific studies, maintaining the Earth's habitability, plants that can be taken to other planets to start new ecosystems, the list goes on and on. But how do we put a value on every ecosystem on Earth? Don't worry because we have the internet. Meet Robert Costanza, author of The Value of the World's Ecosystem Services and Natural Capital, published in Nature International Journal of Science. Oof. And in this article, Mr. Costanza and his colleagues estimated the total value of all the work and services done by the Earth's ecosystems done in one year. So if we were to think of all the world's ecosystems as one giant company, this company would make an estimated 33 trillion US dollars every year. And this research was done back in 1997. And at the time, this would make the world's ecosystem twice as large as the entire world economy. Mother Nature said, hold my beer, and never came back for it. But that's not the whole story. In 2014, the original authors of this article redid some of their work and came up with a new estimate of nature producing $145 trillion worth of work and services every year. And now that we have a number to represent how much the ecosystem makes, we can think of this like buying a business that has an annual profit of $145 trillion annually. And here's where things start to get interesting. Now there's not really one right way of valuing a company. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of wrong ways to value a company, but just know that the way I'm doing the math here isn't the one right way of doing this, and someone might go about this a lot differently. But these are still some common methods used to get an estimation. The methods I'm going to focus on here are cost approach and discounted cash flow. Cost approach is a way of valuing a company by asking how much it would cost to duplicate the company. Let's say I have a bakery. It took me $10,000 in five years to build this company. Based on cost approach, this bakery would be valued at around $10,000 because that's how much it would cost for someone to duplicate this company. 
Discounted cash flow, meanwhile, values a company based on how much the company is expected to make. So the more money my bakery makes every year, the more money you would buy it for. It's kind of common sense. So let's say my bakery makes $50,000 a year. If someone else wanted to make a bakery like mine, then it would take them about five years. And by that time, my bakery will have made $250,000 by the time another person has spent $10,000 to duplicate my business. So my bakery is valued at $260,000 because that's the difference if you wanted to build a separate bakery just like mine. So if someone bought my bakery for $200,000, then in theory, they will have made $60,000 more than if they had started their duplicate company. And that's how much you would pay to buy my business. Now I am greatly oversimplifying this, but this is still a good method to use that could apply to our environment to get a value. Now, as far as we know, the earliest life forms on Earth are dated back 3.5 billion years ago. So let's say that it would take 3.5 billion years to duplicate our ecosystem. Then at the current rate of our ecosystem, producing an equivalent of $145 trillion every year, by the time someone can replicate our global ecosystem, our ecosystem will have made an equivalent of $507 sextillion. So the CEOs might want to buy our ecosystem for $400 sextillion to make a $107 sextillion profit. I hope this price puts in perspective how valuable our environment is. Because if you run the numbers, it's more valuable than the planet itself. And we really need to take care of it. Which brings me to the final point of selling the Earth. Humans. And this one gets really interesting. The funny thing about humans being on the planet is that it might actually bring down the price of the Earth. In Robert Costanzo's revised work, he estimated that in 2011, the ecosystem actually produced 4 to $20 trillion less per year than it did in 1997 due to environmental destruction. To our potential planet buyers, this shows a global ecosystem that is expected to go bankrupt in 100 to 500 years. That's not a lot of time in the scale of buying planets. Now there are a lot of environmental conservation efforts, so I hope this isn't accurate. I'm just looking at this from a business lens, where you can't see the future of a company. So you make a prediction based on what's already happened. And that ain't looking too good for us. The $406 trillion appraisal was how much our Earth's ecosystem would be worth if it were sustainable. At this decline, its value plummets to $2.7 quadrillion at best and $600 trillion at worst. That's because that's how much value the CEOs would get out of our environment if it only lasted 100 to 500 more years. So the best case scenario is that humans make the environment about 148 million times less expensive. That's like finding out a million dollar home is worth just a couple cents because it has termites. That is a big hit on the total value of our Earth. And I wasn't initially planning on doing an environmental message in this video. This was just supposed to be a fun research problem but I hope these numbers help show how much less value the environment has if we keep destroying it at the rate we are now. But the CEOs are also buying the human race itself. That must have some profit to it because of how much people produce. Well, let's find out. But a $399.9999973 sextillion dollar loss is a lot to cover. So using the same methods we use to calculate the value of our ecosystem, we can calculate the potential value of the human race. While the first ancestors to the modern humans is estimated to have lived between 5 and 7 million years ago, I think we need to use the time humans first started creating tools as a starting point, about 2.5 million years ago. The reason I'm doing this is because before making tools, humans were just another part of the ecosystem, which we already calculated. This is arguably when humans first started producing things of value that were separate from the global ecosystem. Then in 2014, the gross world product, or the total value of all the goods made and services provided in the world for one year, was about $78 trillion. Now I'm going to round this number up to $104 trillion a year, which isn't just a random number. The current world population is 7.5 billion people, and the estimated maximum world population is 10 billion people. So $104 trillion is the estimated gross world product at 10 billion people, assuming we're just as efficient as we are today. I'm calculating the human race at its maximum population because I don't want to estimate the economic growth for the next 2.5 million years. And I'm not sure if that's even possible. I'm being very optimistic, so just keep in mind that this is an overestimation. Great. So by the time another intelligent species is able to duplicate everything the human race has created, the human race will have produced $104 trillion every year for 2.5 million years to give us $260 quintillion. That is our estimated price tag for the entire human race. Now, don't get me wrong, no human is worth any amount of money. But according to these calculations, each individual person is valued at $26 billion on a planetary market. That's a price tag I'd feel proud wearing. Until you calculate the total loss from devaluing the environment. Okay. So at best the environment loses 399 sextillion, 999 quintillion, 997 quadrillion, 300 trillion US dollars of value. And if we add the 260 quintillion dollars of value the human race adds to the planet, you can already tell that this doesn't look too good. We get a grand total of negative 399 sextillion, 739 quintillion, 997 quadrillion, 300 trillion US dollars. So actually, each person is worth about negative 40 trillion dollars on the planetary market. Eh, it could be worse. So to conclude and get our total listing price for our beautiful Earth, we have 
5 quadrillion dollars for the habitability of the planet calculated with Laughlin's equation, 400 sextillion dollars from the ecosystem, and negative this number I don't want to say again, dollars from humans if we're being very optimistic. To give our planet an appraised market value of 260 quintillion, 7 quadrillion, 700 trillion US dollars. But wait, only through this special TV offer. Call in the next 30 years and we'll include the moon at no extra charge. Seriously though, I didn't include any charge for the moon because it seems like it would just be included in the price for the planet. Like a tree growing in the backyard of a house. So there's our estimate. After a lot of calculations, we, the head scientists, give this approximation to our king. And he is quick to turn around and give this offer to the CEOs. They agree to the price and pay the king the ludicrous amount of money. While the king plans on keeping the majority of the wealth, he buys a spaceship from them to move all willing humans to a different habitable planet. The CEOs are more than happy to do this, since this potentially increases the value of their purchased planet. They even offer the king a discount on the ship. The king then takes a majority of people on Earth to go find a new place to call home. Please remember to stop by next time on Inquirity, and we'll take a dive into social psychology to find out if there's a demand for terrible movies. And if there's a fun question you'd like me to talk about, let me know in the comments, and I might find an answer to it. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye!